I think we will start the session as the whole day is uh, filled with very with a wealth of different breakout sessions. So we've all been um, really promising that we would run the sessions in good time, in good detail, but in good time so that that allows you also to seamlessly go to a next session afterwards. Well, however, first of all, very much welcome to this first breakout session of this energy efficiency marketplace. Um, I have the pleasure to moderate you through this session, but the main time, the main speaking time should be going to our project. So I'll just make a very short introduction. My name is Annette Jan. I'm working for the EASMA, for the Executive Agency, so for the H2020 Energy uh, Program. I'm the head of the Energy Efficiency Finance Team, and in, it's that, in, that, in that place that I'm particularly pleased to announce the session on um, Energy Positive today. For those of you who've been in the opening session, um, there's been a lot of aspects raised around scaling, around ambitious of deep retrofit, around creativity, um, like the room is called creativity, and I think this fits very nicely, because what you're going to listen to is one of really a very outstanding showcase example, really a front rider, if I may say already before, Raphael has the chance to tell us why this is the case. Um, in terms of getting over uh, a lot of structural and very detailed issues and barriers to turn the barrier into a fantastic opportunity for home renovation on condominiums, which in case it works successfully, as in this one here, are really producing exemplary push-border examples which could be really well replicated throughout Europe. So we are particularly proud of this project. It's one of our 40 technical assistance projects that we've been managing in the last five years. Um, what you need to know about the ASMA only is what you've heard this morning, that we are managing the energy program, but we are also in charge of the life program uh, in case that was of interest to you. And we've got a whole wealth of information around in the stands where we have colleagues, dedicated colleagues from our program, which can help you in more detail. Um, but now I think we should get to the project. Um, we have the particular pleasure of having the project manager here, um, he, Raphael Klaustre, who is the director of Energy Positive, which is um, a very special vehicle enterprise, and he will tell you all about it, which has been set up in particular of the, in the Paris region in order to tackle one of the most difficult and probably one of the most challenging segments in the building sector, which is condominiums um, at scale. So the Energy Positive has been created by the French region, Ile-de-France, and if you've retained the word one-stop shop in the opening session from our banker, then this is one of the front-running one-stop shops, and Raphael will tell you all the steps, but all the, the services which are offered by this project. Thank you very much. Raphael, the floor is yours for 30 minutes. I know you would want to probably ask questions in uh, the meantime. Having said this, uh, I would suggest that we'll follow Raphael through the presentation. <coughs> There is a good question answer time which is reserved at the end of the presentation, so we make sure that you can really get also your detailed questions off the chest that you would like to speak, um, and we just hold the sp spontaneous reactions to when Raphael has finished. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Annette. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to introduce you to what we've been uh, developing at Energy Positive, thanks to uh, the, uh, the European support. I will try to focus on the most replicable aspects, even though, as you can imagine, there are some aspects of what we're doing that are specific to our region or to the country. But I will try to show what is probably similar to every EU countries. And I will start with the context, and then I will describe our action. And finally, I will focus on what we learned, what we did well, and what we think we shouldn't have done this way if we had none earlier. Uh, first thing, the region I'm working for, I'm, uh, I come from what we call Paris region, but it's actually much bigger than Paris. Paris is uh, called Région Île-de-France. It's 12 million inhabitants, so it's quite uh, uh, that's a big population, and it's densely populated. It's the same population as Belgium on a two, three times smaller uh, surface. And that means, because it's very densely populated, that there is a lot one of the most uh, densely popular, uh, one of the uh, one of the regions where the most collective buildings 
many of them are uh, condominiums. Condominiums means that they are build the buildings are owned by several families, and these families have to agree on the decisions in terms of management. And if some of you have experienced that, it's always complicated to agree on small things, and it's even more complicated to agree on big things like investment and investments of big amounts, like energy efficiency. In our region, we have about two million uh, Two million dwellings in uh, uh, two million dwellings in the, this <coughs> sector, multi-family buildings. Half of them are poorly insulated in the in the worst uh, categories of the energy performance certificate. And the the barriers to energy efficiency investment are of course the same as in other residential sectors or other sectors. Uh, long written time, for example, or difficulty to find the financing, but there are also specific barriers, uh, like the one I just mentioned, the fact that people have to agree, and of course, all people living or owning apartments in these, uh, in these buildings have different priorities in uh, living different moments of their life, have different capacity of investment. Uh, that's also non-professional managers because these people who make, decide to make or not to make investments are like you and me, not professional, and usually uh, in most uh, sectors, when you buy, when you do a purchase above 100,000 or above a million, it's always done by a professional. It's never done by a not professional. And for all these decisions, nothing happens in this sector because they never manage to, to agree and to set up to design a good project. Also because they're quite bad at purchasing, whatever they purchase in this sector. They hate companies because they've got the feeling that whatever they will buy, the, these things are going to go bad and that they will purchase in a very bad manner. So it, it's very important to bring trust to this relationship. And because of all these barriers and because of the importance of this sector in the region, the local authority, Région de France, decided to create a public-private company that would offer uh, services on this sector. So the company has been created by the region, but it's not owned by the region 100%. It's 50% for the region. And then we also have in the shareholders Paris City, uh, some, of, some of the local authorities, and two bank and financing companies called Caisse des dépôts et consignations and Caisse d'épargne. Because the depot in consignation is the equivalent of the German KFW that is sometimes more famous in energy efficiency. The objective of a company, Energy Positive, is to increase uh, energy efficiency, develop energy efficiency in the sector of condominium. First of all, by increasing the confidence and increasing the expertise by developing an offer that is adapted to their needs and that allows to overcome the barriers that have been identified. We have, our objective is to save minimum 40% energy in the, in the projects we carry out. And the specificities are to be, first of all, a one-stop shop. I will de describe it more in detail. To design tailored financing solutions, because when you have 100, 100 families, you must, you cannot design, you cannot show them a general financing solution. You must show them a financing solution that is adapted to their very specific situation. And uh, third innovation, third aspect of the offer we developed is third party financing. The objectives we initially set are 10,000 dwellings renovated, renovated or under renovation by 2020, which would be equivalent to 250 million investments. So you can see that we are on an average of 25,000 euros investment. Uh, in our objective. That's what is more or less necessary to go for a real energy efficient uh, building. So the, the business model, the, the process we set up is, well, I can't go and show because the microphone <laughs> won't record me anymore. So first of all, we, we suggest the, the owners of the condominium to do an, what we call an audit. So to analyze the state of the state of the art of the building from an architectural point of view, from an energy point of view, and from financial point of view. So it's always analyzing the building and the people living or people owning the building all together. It's not one and then the other, but it's always all together. This audit is, to be honest, not that necessary from a technical point of view, but it's necessary from a commercial point of view. 
because the audit costs about between 100 and 200 euros per family, which is acceptable when you're not, when you're not yet sure you want to go for works. And then the, the next step that we call project management, or I think I should rather call it design of the work program, is the most important one, but this one costs between 500 and 1,000 euros. So they would only buy it if they're 100% convinced that they want to go for work. This is why the audit is sometimes very important to, to catch them, to raise their attention. Usually in a condominium, you've got one, two, three people who are interested, and most of them who don't really care about that. So the people who are interested will convince the others to buy an audit, and then we will try to convince everyone that is very important. And I will explain to you that we convince them that energy is an important topic, but that most people won't go for the project just for, uh, for energy reasons. Other reasons will be as important and usually more important. So the, the project management, project design, is probably the most important phase. This is when we will design all the architectural project, the energy project, and the financing project. We always make sure we have these three skills could them three engineers, but in practice, there's an architect, uh, energy thermal engineer, and what we call a financing engineer, who will design the solutions uh, at different stages of the project. And there's a project manager who's in charge of communication with the, with the con con condominium, because communication is even more important than in any other project, because you're talking to non-professional uh, customers, and they really need explanation. And if you start, for example, as I did, saying that the average is 25,000 euros, there is no chance you go through. You must start saying that, yes, it's probably going to be an investment that is quite big, but we don't know how much it's going to be, and actually we don't know. And we, but we don't tell this kind of average because, it's first of all, it's very risky. They might find it too expensive and stop immediately. Second, when we say 25,000, it's an average. It's not uncommon that we reach 30,000. And if you started saying it's going to be 25 and it's 30 at the end, you will have problems. And also, 25,000 euros is a big amount for everyone, whether you're rich, poor, average, it's a big amount. So the indicator we focus on is never this share of the works that families will have to pay. We mention it, of course, because they, they must know. But what we focus on is the, the investment they will have to make minus the subsidies they might have, there are always some subsidies, but they will be quite small for families who are average or rich, and they will be higher for families who are poor, and very high for families who are very poor. So this is specific to the country. Every country has different schemes for in terms of subsidies, but I think no country has no subsidy at all. And well, I think many countries, but France is probably better at that, so have complicated schemes. Uh, so I guess we've got six, seven, sometimes eight different schemes which requires what we call the financing engineering. We go and find all the subsidies that exist. So I know that at some point subsidies will have to decrease and maybe possibly disappear, but as long as they exist, the customers want them. And part of our job is to try to find them, have them getting, understanding them, making sure that when we design the work program, everything they're going to do is eligible to the, um, to the subsidies. And, and then we will end up with a very detailed uh, what we call financing plan, explaining them what subsidy they will have, when they will receive it, what loan they need to make, because most subsidies will arrive after the, after the works. That means that they must make a high uh, loan, and then they will pay back part of the loan with the subsidies they will receive. And the, the indicator we focus the most on is how much they will pay back after subsidies and after energy savings. And this is actually the most important because this is how much poor they will be after the project, how, uh, how much less money they will have every month. And we try to show them that because there are subsidies for uh, poor and very poor households, that is always affordable. And this is actually true for our average is for what we call very poor households. So it's let's say about 15, the 15% poorest people of the population, it will be between uh, zero and 40 euros a month. And for the, what we call poor, so 40% poorest of the population, it will be between 20 and 50 euros. And for the others, it will be between uh, 50 and 100 euros per month on 15 years. But it's still 
an amount that is always affordable. And of course, what we do is never only energy. There's always uh, maintenance of the building and of the walls. There's always uh, redesigning the, the aspect, aesthetical renovation. There's always ventilation redesigning, and that's an improve of air, uh, air quality, improvement of air quality in the building. So it's always um, an upscaling of the building at the same time as the, the energy renovation. And after this stage, then we start the works. To be honest, we've got far less project at this stage because everything is very long. And then uh, measurement of the quality, how, how far are we to the expected uh, energy savings, and even possibly even a bit better. So how, what are our first um, conclusions? How to make it happen? One of the questions that often appears is, is it profitable? And I will try to answer this question in detail, but first of all, profitable is a word that has many definitions. Uh, make it feasible on all aspects, so I think it's very important what we design to have the energy, architectural, and financial aspect always managed together. Communication is absolutely key in, uh, in this sector. It's probably key in all sectors, but even more in sectors where uh, the customers are not professional. And, uh, and keep quality high, because one of the... Um, well, of course, you should always keep quality high. But for us, what is specific to our model is that we have been created by local authorities. That means that the customers have trust before knowing us, they trust us. But after four years, this won't count. What we count is what we have been doing and the quality of what we've been doing and the reputation we will develop. And when you come from local authority, when you do good, it can be, it can be known. But if you do something wrong, it will be known everywhere and very quickly. So we must always try to do the best uh, and make sure that if something goes wrong, because at the end there will always be something that is not perfect in what we do, always try to deal with it the best because you, you will have problems <coughs> if you are very visible as, you, as we are. Uh, so is it profitable? That's the question we're always asked. First of all, if we base it on uh, just energy savings, we look at all the projects, uh, we look at the energy savings in euros, and then the, we, make the, we, we divide the investment by the energy savings. It's between 15 and 40 years. So from this point of view, you could say that an investor would find it profitable because the, the investments last more than 50 years and ideally more than 40 years, but it, it would scare most of, the, most of the investors. Also because in our region, uh, people usually sell their apartment after seven years. So they will never have paid back their investment. So there's, of course, you should also take into account, and that's very complicated, the increase of energy price. But as you know, uh, we, for years, we've always been saying energy price, uh, prices are always going to increase. And the opposite happened between 20, 2014 and 2016. So it's quite complicated now with low price of energy and with no certainty and the increase of, of energy price to base on our um, calculation on that. However, we, we are looking at one thing now. In France, we've got a carbon tax. And this one, at least, is not based on a market. It's mature on the next four years. So we can use that in our calculations. But we can't really use an increase of the, the energy price. But one other aspect is very important, very important. When you do an investment, you normally don't just count the, the, the payback time. Normally, you take into account the the value, the added value of your estate because you invested in it. And this needs to be estimated. Uh, since the energy performance certificate has been created by the, uh, the, um, the, the building performance directive, the, there's a big database that has been created in France and that has all, all the, um, the sales that happened in the field of, um, of real estate with the price of the good, the location, the energy performance certificate, and the quality, the state of the good. So it's quite easy statistically to make an analysis of the impact of the energy performance certificate on the, the value of the real estate. And this is something that is extremely helpful. In the, in the whole country, the average is 5% per energy category, which is extremely big. But there are many differences, of course. It is much bigger in houses, it's bigger for houses and less for apartments. That's not good for us. And it is less in tensed markets. So for example, this is Paris region, and you have 
be working. Yeah. Sorry, I'm too short for that. <coughs> Paris City is this circle. So in Paris City, where the market is extremely tense, the, the energy performance certificate basically has no impact. Then you've got the closed suburb, so that's real suburb, extremely dense. Then the, uh, the, it, the, the energy performance certificate has a certain impact. It would be like 7% between the worst categories and the best. And in this area, where we've got uh, remote suburbs and, uh, and countryside, then the impact is bigger, it's 12%. The, these figures are only for apartments. So that would be probably bigger for houses, even though there are not houses in Paris, and Paris is close to that. Uh, but in this area, that would count a lot. So we always show that as something to convince them. But that's an average, of course. And we must be honest and tell them we've got no idea how that would be on their, in their specific situation, whether it would be better than that, worse than that. But we can tell them that it's proven that there is a clear impact of that. And to be honest, my belief is that it's extremely important for them to invest not only to improve the increase the value of their estate, but also to avoid decreasing it, because now there are more and more new buildings that are set that are built at very high energy standards, uh, thanks to the uh, the recent regulations and, uh, and the directives on this aspect. There are some social dwellings that are rather well renovated, and the the buildings that look the worst are at least in our, in our country, are the condominiums built between in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and they have not been properly renovated. And if they don't do this renovation, both from aesthetical maintenance and energy point of view, then the value is clearly going to decrease. So our approach is always to tell them, you are doing this invest investment in energy and other aspects, to, to keep up with expectations of possible buyers of tomorrow. We sometimes take the example of bathroom in the 50s, bath bathroom didn't exist in Europe. And first, some rich investors uh, created bathrooms in their apartments. New buildings had in bath uh, bathrooms. And slowly, it, was, it became completely impossible to set an apartment that had no bathroom. And what I believe, at least, is this will be possible to sell such apartments in 10 or 20 years. So it's a necessity for them to keep up on the, on the reset market. So how to finance it? I described it already. There are grants, subsidies, and then what is what has to be financed can be financed by um, by the savings, of course, but this is their business, not ours, and by loans. So we always negotiate loans for them. When we initially created Energy Positive five years ago, one of the focus, one of the most important aspects was to offer all together a loan and the technical so we signed a contract with uh, the, the investment European Bank, the European Bank of Investments, and um, that's a big contract for 100 million euros that allows us to, uh, to offer loans to the, to the condominiums or to the families. Today, I'm not going to get into details with that because we are working on a very uh, changing market, and what was extremely important five years ago is Still important, but less, because now banks, or a few banks, three small banks, have developed offers that worked quite well on, the, um, on this market, on the condominium market. We managed to have 2.4% loans on 15 years, so it's very acceptable. Uh, there's also a 0% loan that has been developed by the government but I'm not sure they're going to keep it for long because it's going to cost at some point and because it's very complicated in terms of um, administration. But what was really important, offering loans by yourself, is now just uh, an extra thing we would like to do quite soon, but it's not absolutely necessary anymore because on all the projects we've been working on, we managed to find a loan from a private bank. So these are the figures that we published at the end of our European project in September. And luckily, they're already, they're already not true anymore because we work for 44 uh, condominiums. We only work, work for big condominiums because we are quite sophisticated. We have a quite sophisticated model. So we would be too expensive for the small one. It wouldn't be worth working with us for that. So it's only condominiums above 50 apartments and ideally more than 100. So we worked <coughs> for 44 of them. Uh, 12 of them have already voted the works. What I call voted the works is this important state, which is actually 
minimum two years between this and that, and often and luckily often three years. So 12 of them have voted the works, and this is a total of 2,600 apartments. And, and our average uh, energy efficiency, energy saving is almost 50%. So quite happy about that. Now there are six similar companies in uh, different French regions. Sorry, uh, six or either working or project. And the lessons we learned uh, quickly. First, we, we're quite sure that it, it changed everything to be a public-private company, private for the, the culture of efficiency and being allowed to go on a, on a commercial market and public because our shareholders are very patient and not too demanding and also because it created confidence. Uh, it's important to build partnerships, not try to do everything. What I meant here is that we work together, we sub subcontract most of our studies on architectural aspects and our energy, uh, energy studies because they already existed before. They would not be happy if you were doing that with a public company without giving them part of this business. And also there are so many things we had to develop that we were really happy to work together with uh, other consultants and businesses that already know how to do these kind of things. Uh, it's very important to have a single contact point uh, with condominiums because the project lasts five years and this is how it developed the confidence. We're proud to say that we have political support because we were a bit scared two years ago when there were elections and the party changed, the leading party changed in the region, the government changed. And in that case, when you're a public-private company with a government as a main shareholder, you always wonder whether you will be kept or totally modified. And they decided to keep it on the same general principles. We're very happy with it. And always think of networking. We're quite small. We're 14 people. And there are so many things to do that we always try to share experiences at European level in this kind of uh, environment, uh, thanks to the European project we, we took part to. And also at national level, we've got a network of the third party financing, uh, regional third party financing companies, where we share everything and uh, all our expertise. And be flexible because the market gaps which we identified and tried to overcome were always different every year. Sometimes something was really important and one year after, it was less important that we worked on that, so it's very important to be very adaptable and flexible. And just one minute, what we didn't do, uh, or didn't succeed on yet, succeed on yet is first, we don't offer loans yet. We hope to do it soon, but we still have a financing activity. We pre-finance the subsidies when the households have a contract with uh, any governmental or public organization that says yes, you allow the grant, but you will have it at the end of the works, then we pre-finance it. Um, well, don't forget that decision-making is hard. It's a complicated process, and it's always longer than you expect, especially innovation is longer than you expect. And there's probably one, uh, yeah, one I would like to insist on. If we have been created by the region, it's because the private sector wasn't addressing this. And if the private sector wasn't addressing that, there was a reason. It was not profitable, or at least not profitable on normal approach on a two, three, four year business plan. So it was important to have a public intervention to create a new offer and hopefully not try to renovate everything on our own, but open this market. And I think it was slowly succeeding because now we start having competitors, which makes our life more complicated, but means that we might have succeeded because well, we don't have many, uh, we've got one. And I think another company is starting to develop something similar. But that means it's starting to work slowly. Um, and that, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the um, very inspiring um, presentation. Um, I think what came out very clearly is um, the potential for the public sector to drive um, a whole a whole constitu constituency, if you want, um, to actually overcome structural barriers in, in such a way. And even if, obviously, with your project team, you must have felt that that took slightly longer than initially planned, that in the end of the day, within five years, I remember when we started um, the contract with you, um, with the support to actually set up the special uh, vehicle, 
um, and to get the financial engineering um, right. Um, that in, in the end of the day, having a structure plan of five years from where that started, um, in terms of the numbers of the condominiums now that you are now working with, were 40 plus, multiplied with the number of apartments that you're looking for, that gives quite a scale already. But now I think the floor is to our, um, to our participants. And uh, uh, please, if you have any question, it's now. Thank you. Hey, sir. Yeah. My name is Antonio Negri. I'm working for GSE. GSE is a public-owned company, state-owned company in Italy that is in charge to give incentive to renewable and uh, energy efficiency. And well, just to give you a, a figure, Italy is is giving mm, through GSE 16 billion euros per year incentive to renewable and energy efficiency. The, the main part is for renewable, of course, but. Uh, and GSE is managing one of the, no, two, but uh, one, one specifically dedicated to, to, to building mechanism of supporting energy efficiency, which is called Conto Termico. And we incentivate on a, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, on a capital uh, intervention. So we, we pay a part of the investment directly uh, to, to, the, to the household or uh, ESCOs or, or whatever. And... Uh, another mechanism, which is not managed by GSC, but is managed by the, the Treasury Ministry in general, is tax deduction, which is much more important in terms of, of money because it's much more easy to, to, uh, to be implemented. You, you, you substitute your boiler in, in your house and you simply deduct from, from your annually uh, taxes to be paid the uh, amount in 10 years. So we have to to split it in, over, over a, quite a long period. Well, my, my question is, if I correctly understood, you, your company mainly act as a one-stop shop uh, uh, um, subject to, to ensure everything. I mean, diagnosis and ideas, uh, design uh, and, and financing and, and also construction and that's all, but, but if you arrive to the construction stage, you, the, main, the main job is, is already done, let's say, right. convincing the people. And, uh, yeah. and my question is, how could you, uh, well, the, is it correct that the key issue for the success, or, well, let me explain better. In Italy, one of the main uh, barrier to, to uh, refurbishment of condominium is not only the extremely fraction small small uh, decision process small small um, how can i say the decision process is split into more a lot of subject that, that have to, to agree on decision and so on and so on but also is a financial barrier who wants to to spend uh, 10000 uh, euros uh, for 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 energy because energy is not a yes uh, and my question is um, do you think that it's a key of success to, to grant uh, a financial in one, uh, uh, just one, one, sh one stop shop? And how could you ensure that the condominium got the money in advance and has not to, to uh, has, could, could uh, repay the investment uh, without uh, a, a big exborse in, in one, uh, one time? Sorry for my long question. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we make sure that they will pay back that's because they've got a contract and as as i described that's a contract with the bank but if it was with us it would be the same commitment and i told you the the average amount it's never an amount it's never a high amount it's always affordable so we're very confident that it would be it would be paid back they also there's a loan insurance on the contract whether it's a loan with the banks or with us which makes sure that if one of the family doesn't pay back, it do, the loan doesn't have to pay, be paid back by the other co-owners. So it's a collective loan. It's signed by the condominium. But, and, uh, and all the families decide if they want to use this collective loan. A uh, family can say, I want zero in this loan. I want 10,000. I want 20,000. So it's a, a free decision. And there's no solidarity in the loan because thanks to the bank insurance. So we're quite sure that we'll pay back and the, the amount is always affordable. I think that's it. Short question. 
short answer. <laughs> <laughs> I have two short questions. Maybe you want to come here because the mic is okay. here. Hello, thank you for your presentation. My name is Razva Munteanu. I'm coming from Romania, City Hall of Bucharest, District 1. I have two very short questions. My first question is related to the procurement uh, process, because you didn't mention anything about the public procurements. We are struggling a lot with procurements in, in Romania. And the question is, uh, who is in charge with uh, procurements in your case? And how long is taking to, to do all the process regarding procurements? And the second question is uh, related to the the, um, the buildings, you mentioned that you, this program is uh, for the buildings which was built between 15, 50 and 70. And the question is if you, if you have into, con into consideration the earthquake risk for some, some buildings. The, the, the earthquake risk. risk. OK, earthquake. Uh, yeah. OK, thank you. Yes, Levin van Stralen from Inez Invest. Uh, we are about to start a project here in Brussels to create a similar company as yours called uh, Brubat uh, with a consortium of different parties. Uh, it's subsidized, by the way, uh, partially by the, the Brussels government. My question is about the, the key success factors in the process of getting the, the homeowners uh, on board. How do you, what, what do you really think are the key success factors of that yeah, recruitment process, basically? Thank you. Olivier Longin from uh, Région Grand Est. Uh, I have a question of money. What is the cost of your service and what is the price for the final user? <laughs> Hello, I'm Patrick Salen from Rainbow Ecosystem. Uh, we produce uh, straw compress uh, panels uh, for new buildings. I would like to know if your intervention is also um, relevant for uh, new buildings, because you talk about uh, all, f all staff, but what do you do for the future, for the new buildings? For the, the new future. buildings. <laughs> now, this is the future of the old buildings. I'm talking about the future of the new buildings. Um, so public procurement, uh, yes, we are supposed to follow the rules of public procurement when we buy something, but here we don't buy anything because the condominium is buying. The condominium is buying a study from us. So that's only the studies they buy from us. And then they will buy works. But it's private purchasing, private procurement, because they are buying and they're, they're private. But we, are, we try to take the best of public procurement rules and to avoid the worst. And, uh, and therefore, we do a very, very detailed analysis First, in, the, in this stage, we write all the um, specifications in details. We make um, a consultation of the companies. We make interviews of the companies. We make sure we've got at least three good offers on each of the different uh, parts of the works. And then we make an analysis, re analysis report of that. And then the condominium decides based on our report. But we don't decide and we don't purchase. However, we, are, we often purchase energy studies because we are a one-stop shop. And I said that we sometimes subcontract uh, some of the studies, architectural or, um, or energy studies. And for that, we've got a framework agreement. So we published two, three years ago um, a tender for uh, eight architects, 10 uh, energy consultants. And we've got a, that was a European uh, procurement because it was a high amount. And, uh, and at the end, we've got uh, 10, uh, 10 and 8 companies. And on each new project, we decide either to do it with our own architect and engineer or to subcontract one of these uh, companies we, that are in our framework uh, agreement. Earthquake, uh, yes and no, because we are not in a, in a region that, is, that has such risks. There are some regions in France, but not Ile-de-France. But why, however, we always try to to deal with all, all the other issues so we don't deal with earthquake because it's not an issue in Ile-de-France, but we also think of fire risk 
and we analyze the situation in terms of fire or accessibility for disabled people in the, in the diagnosis we do at the beginning. And we always try, as I said, not to deal only with energy, but with upscaling the building so that it match the expectations of, um, of people in 10 years, 20 years, ideally 30 years, if we are good enough to figure that out. So no earthquake, but always thinking of all the issues, including security issues for the next few years. Uh, how to take people on board, that there are many sociology studies on that. Uh, and uh, first of all, we, you must have uh, one or two people that are very motivated. Uh, you must, even, most of, even if most of the condominiums, most of the, most of the owners are not sure, not really interested, if you've got one or two persons that are really interested and really ready to spend time and try to take people with them, then there's a chance it works. But if no one is really interested, well, first of all, they won't call you, they won't try. Uh, and so that's the person we call the, the project, the energy leader. And, uh, and then if you manage to catch them with the energy leader, you must try to adapt to their, uh, their feeling and what they are the most interested in in the condominium. You must try to see uh, what is their uh, their approach, if it's mostly energy, that happens, or mostly investment, or increasing the quality of the good, and also the diagnosis is, is always a good thing for us. I, we sometimes behave like a uh, you know, garage repair, like you take your car and it says, oh my god, everything's got to be redesigned. And that's what happens with us, because the, bu the building we work with have been built 40, 50 years ago, and have not had any good maintenance. So we analyze everything, and we tell them, that's the truth. This is not good. Your, your walls have little um, cr uh, crackled and uh, it's not uh, waterproof anymore and all that. And we show them that, of course, they could only deal with this maintenance aspect, but we try to embed energy in other, uh, other uh, uh, works that most people would be more interested in. So embedding energy in other, uh, in other approach. And costs. Um, so I said works are average 25,000 and we are on average 60%. So between 100 and 200 per house, per family. Between 500 and 1,000 euro per family. And here we are on average 6% of the works. That's our cost. Ah, new buildings. Uh, there are enough problems and complicated things to do on, <laughs> on renovation. Uh, new buildings have very strong regulation. Uh, this regulation could always be improved. No regulation is perfect. And there are works being carried out now on, uh, on 2020 regulation in France, and I guess in other countries as well. But my feeling and the feeling of the region was that the most of their intervention has to be done on, uh, on renovation when nothing is happening and where regulations that are extremely weak because it's complicated to force people to invest 30,000 euros with no, just here and now. When on a new building, you can say, because you're building a new build, you are creating a new building, you must set, you must match certain requirements. So my belief is that regulations must, uh, we must place on regulations for, uh, for new buildings and we'd have, we would have no added value. The limit of uh, uh, pain that the <laughs> house owners want to sustain, or why not go higher because then the curve just goes uh, exponentially, or why exactly this 50 and not more savings? Uh, it's some sort of a optimal we define, but it's not always the same. Uh, it, it's between 25 and 66 percent, as far as I remember, what we've been doing. Uh, we try. There's a a label, a certification called uh, Bâtiment Basse Consommation, uh, Low Consumption uh, Buildings in France, and that's what gives our, that's our target usually. So as any, just as any target, it's not perfect. It's one, uh, 104, so it's in the middle of this one, and we usually try to, to go there. Sometimes 
uh, we, we can go further. Sometimes we can't reach that point. Sometimes we try to, and then the condominium says, no, I'm not interested in that. I just want to reach this. Well, they don't, they never say we want to reach D. They say, I don't want to insulate this wall because it's very complicated and therefore expensive and we don't want to do that. Um, so that's always depending on what they want because at the end, they decide. We do our best to go as far as possible, but we're not the final decision makers. Thank you very much. I think we'll have to, uh, it, it's one of the frustrating points when we need to conclude the session because I can see that there is a lot of inspiring questions around and probably there have been a few more. Uh, apologies for not being able to take them now. I'm sure that Raphael will be available after the session just to be available for further questions. Otherwise, I'll allow you to move on for the next start of the session, which will be at 12 o'clock. In the meantime, just let me pass you one or two messages still. I think in terms of the deep renovation, um, when we're looking at all of our technical assistance projects, where we are, most of them are actually developing large-scale investment pipelines for renovation, building renovation. Now, what we call deep renovation, so the 60% savings, is obviously a target which is, you know, which is uh, a deep target also shared by us, having said this, in comparison to what, in terms of the shorter payback times, the complete, probably, commercial sector would offer, um, a 50% um, savings on renovation of this typology of building stock is a fairly, when we see our technical assistance projects, that is the ambition that we would want to go, um, at least, um, because basically we're talking about pipelines of scale. We're not talking about single buildings or single districts. We're talking about hundreds of units, or in other cities, we're talking about hundreds of public buildings which are pooled together in one go, and where basically the ambition of the energy saving, which needs to be high in order to actually you know, to, to, in, order, in order to actually defend the European funding needs, however, to be balanced against the scale that we're actually operating in. And that is very much going in complementarity to other initiatives where we are, are going more into the district level, where obviously, you know, the, the deepest, the, the, the depths of the interventions in combination with other measures can be even stronger. Now, that concludes the session. What I would like to highlight is, in case you've had a bigger appetite to actually um, deepen your knowledge around home renovation, which is one of the most challenging segments, as I've um, um, had the chance to say in the introduction, then I can announce that we are organizing um, a specialized webinar so that you can watch this from all over the places that you've had the kindness to come from in Europe today, which is on the 27th of February. If you just Google Sustainable Energy Investment Forum, then you will find the webinar on home renovation. We'll also float this to you through your registration email. If you've allowed us to give you further information, then you will automatically get the invitation to this webinar on home renovation. And obviously, I can't quite leave the stage neither of making at least one announcement. You'll find also the flyers on your seats on the home renovation webinars. On your way out, there should also be um, a page which actually shows you the funding <coughs> opportunities on specific topics around building renovation, on technical assistance, on particular funding for home renovation schemes. So there as well, as um, our colleagues took the opportunity in the Ile-de-France region to take our seed money to actually be equipped to work out that smart plan for their region, Obviously, there are many regions um, in Europe who could do the same. And if that was inspiring to you, look at our funding opportunities. You have, a, you have a summary of those when you walk out on one page. I think this is all that we can give to you now. Uh, so we hope you've enjoyed the session. And um, we'll wish you other further rich sessions. The next one to start in, in, in a few minutes at 12 o'clock. So if you want to catch your seat, um, I'm sorry that you have to transit fairly quickly. Thank you again.